I'm Nitin Dahad with EE Times. And I'm talking today to Gopi Sirenini, CEO of Axiado Corporation. Now, he's got quite a sort of uh, good background in wireless uh, networking, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and creating things from nothing. Uh, when I met him in Silicon Valley, uh, I was sort of driven by his passion. Uh, sorry, I was enthused by his passion for creating stuff uh, that people are using day to day. Gopi, hello. Hi, Nitin. Thanks for having me. Thank you for uh, joining us. So, uh, first of all, just let's t tell me a little bit about uh, uh, you. Um, how did you get into the industry? Uh, what sort of created this person who is able to create things from nothing? Uh, you know, uh, my dad is a professor, so there's a lot of teaching happens in when I was a kid, you know, saying that uh, you got to make an impact. You know, when, when a human comes up in the, this world, you got to be able to make a difference to help uh, four people at least. And people remember when you go, people need to remember. Maybe that instilled in my head, continue to look for something. And he's always been you know, intrigued by everything and he kind of let us out to do us to open up anything. And I can give you a simple example of uh, my dad used to ride a you know, old model called Razdut at the time in India. It's a bike. We use a lot of bikes. Yeah. Uh, I used to open up everything pretty much. You know, I know how to open things, but the putting back is you know challenge to the things. <laughs> During a couple of times that way, he never yelled at us, but it actually helped us to put that things back. It makes us right. to see beyond the picture and then what you can do better, whatever it is. So that's can maybe that's what started off saying that we got to do something and something what is your passion about rather than a general because somebody paying you or somebody you have to do it. So it's never is that never I did anything that I had to do it and everything in my life fortunate to be I did it because I'm interested to do it. And what, what were the things you took apart? I mean, for example, I remember my dad in the 70s taking apart the valves in black and white TVs and yeah, fixing things, exactly. soldering exactly. things and putting them back. So the team, first is uh, that mechanical, the bike itself. And you know, I had to change the spark plugs and all the stuff when I was like oh, yes. 12, 12 type thing. And I did not know what the spark plug is. There's no YouTube to look for. You had to open up and see where that is and you get burned in your hand and all that. So yep. that was the first one to do it. And then the second one I didn't talk about a TV, you know, common black and white, black and white TV. And if it didn't work and I had to solder and you yeah. won't remember, I didn't have a solder or anything. So I had to use a plug directly. And if you put a two wires in there, you put a spark comes up using that as a soldering technique. So kind uh, of one thing, yeah. Yeah, those were the days, but uh, it's good now we have YouTube and, and the instructive videos. Yeah. But uh, so how did you uh, like, Think about you know, studying electronics and communications. Was that from from that sort of building and or breaking and building things? Something is interesting always for me to be looking into you know beyond what's obvious. How does it run? How does it do it? That curiosity is maybe it's in in, in genes and all that. My dad is pretty active DIY guy too, also. So maybe that's how I got it. But I went to boarding school, uh, the electronics and all that stuff. The boarding school has a closed by military base, and we get a lot of flights go up and on, on the, you know, around taking off type. It's a little bit away from the city and all that, in a, somewhere almost in the forest, middle of nowhere. We have a school in there, uh, completely. You, you live in there. So I went there when I was a small kid, doing 10 years old. The curiosity for me, the how they are not, how they're flying, most of the people look for how they're flying, but somehow for me, how do they know to go to point A to point B? And uh -huh. how do they communicate between there? There's, a, there's no roads, there's no highway. So kind of that made me to look for, okay, that's a communications, that's something they're talking. It's a satellite and all that stuff. So I was very intrigued to satellite. All the way that translated to my electronics and doing the electronic uh, engineering itself. In electronics also, I did a communication as a special yeah. uh, You know, I did work a little bit of that uh, in the satellite communication part before I moved to US. So... That's kind of made it. In my term, at that age, uh, that generation type, everybody Indian was doing a computer science and everything. Even if you do it mechanical engineering, everybody shifted to learning the programming and move it to, but for me, I don't want to do it. I stayed with, and I was pure of the guys who stayed stick with your exactly fundamental thing, which is electronics. And whatever the reason, you know, market awarded for that too also, then you know, one of the few guys left over on that. Uh, electronic. That's why you, you talked about we know each other because it was a small community to do it and continue to do that. 
so yes, uh, that uh, then then sort of led you to your first job at IDT as a design manager in 1995. How did you land that? So we, so University of Arkansas, went to school and everybody asked how the hell uh, I ended up in there. I am proud to be, to be in Lays and back and definitely it's a small town. It's a good change from a company, a country like India coming up. Uh, it's a small town, university town. Everybody you know, works with you. Everybody knows each other. So there is a electronics fab inside. It's a class uh, 500, I forgot, 100 fab inside. So we get to do the real fabrication and develop the chips and able to inst- you know, real depositing and all that stuff too. So that made us to you know, a lot more value learning in that school itself. And then uh, you market, you know, we had a lot of campus interviews and up. I had an opportunity to go to the Texas, you know, which is TI and all that, and come to here is a Falsum type of, which is Intel. And able to few other companies, but we want to come to media. This was a, my, you know, if you are in electronics, if you are in IT, you know, while I was going to college, also, if you're coming, you got to come to media. That's all it was. So that made us to take the job at IDT. And IDT gave a job because of the fab. So I started as a, you know, first year was actually yield engineer and then transit to design, uh, design engineer and design manager afterwards to become that. And we were working on ADM, uh, ADM to desktop type solutions on that. Mm. So, it's that that old technology to be able to and then transition that to the internet later. Okay, and uh, I mean I won't go through the whole sort of list of jobs, but then your your next major role was at Marvell, and then you went to Applied Micro, and uh, a, a good stint at Qualcomm uh, with a, with a oh sorry Ubicom as well, and uh, a little sort of I noticed one year you did a a, a small company which you exited in one year, which is quite interesting. But we'll go to that later. Tell us the common theme of, of sort of taking you through through your roles and what do you feel quite sort of proud and passionate about? At IDT, within one year, I got promoted to manager. So that shows that you know, I can take a responsibility. My boss, you know, who's a, I can I can mention his name, Carl Hagemeyer. He's one of the best bosses I had. He, he sees the value of what I can do it. And he, was, he gave me one compliment on that. You know, he's also a designer, hands-on when he's typing something. When we're coding something together, I sat next to him. Uh, you know, he was telling, I was telling him to what next type and next thing to type without stopping myself. So it says, I have the passion to be able to jump in and try to do myself. So he did recognize, he did allow me to give more responsibility very quickly. I, I become a manager on that too. And that made to lead to a you know, company. I met Sahad at uh, Marvell in one of the conferences and he gave a rain check and we took that rain check sometime later. And that right, Marvel was the best learning experience, and I'm really thankful to Saad and really for these guys. You would drink from a you know firewalls itself, and a lot of stuff you had to do parallelly. That's a great startup experience to me. Uh, you know, we did many things in there from my getting a CPU architecture license, building the CPU itself, the Kirkwood, now it's called Armada family, and the switching side designs and Nick product family. We didn't have the you know we were doing some Macs to work with Intel and we made a custom music for ourselves, sold into the market. That made me to, you know, so one fine day when marketing guy was not there and for whatever the reason, health reason, I ended up being presented to the customer on that day being a, a mm. lead of the product. And that kind of made me to interest of, hey, I got to be able to on the, on the front line of this too also. So that made me to, you know, transition into kind of marketing and business side role in the technology portion. So that take it to the further, we, we add, we, we opened up on every box in the market, you know, we had to look for, we bought an embedded processor building it, need to fit into something market. So we bought printers, we bought any electronics in the price outside, price electronic shop, open up and see what is there and how can we do better. And that becomes a printers, that become a small printer, big printers, and we made a deal with Lexmark, Konica, everybody on that world, and made the mobile router, you know, all kind of, including the time, cost, time capsule Airport Express from Apple, all that innovation and that company is an amazing to think customers, customers. So they train me a lot more. If you make a silicon, but you can think further, what is a problem with solving for customer? So if you think about a customer's customer use case, then you can build inside and then you can make that better rather than wait for a customer to give an RFI and then you only answer for the RFI. That gives us a lead and every, every product, every family we compete in, we are ahead of everybody because we did solve somebody's problem ahead of time. That was actually quite interesting because when I when when we met in Silicon Valley, that was one of the things that stuck in my mind, which was yeah, you're always thinking about the customer's customer. Uh, yeah. And a lot of startups, 
actually think of their product without thinking about that. So it's quite interesting you had that mindset from the beginning. Yeah, some training. I'm fortunate to be people around me to train in that way. So I, mean, I, I always use this to say uh, this is one of the NFL. I, I'm a big fan of football and all this stuff. So one of the NFL coaches said uh, you had to see if you want to be you know, great, you had to be seeing. And if you want to do the impossible, you had to be able to see the invisible. What he meant by saying that your cornerback has to be able to think before the you know receiver goes to a certain place, you had to be able to say that's what the receiver is going to go to after whatever it is, and you're going to throw the ball there, trusting your teammate. And it's the same applies to us too also. If there is a flag for a billion-dollar business outside, everybody would have been already solved. Everybody would have been flocked there to solve that. You had to create, you are the one to erect that flag and be able to go and see that, envision that. So that's that's been always my mantra, my people who is a mentor for me and all solving it. We always look for how can I make it better, okay? And not just take it as somebody says, this is better, this is not you know, good or bad. In my personalities, I had to feel for it myself. I don't Dang. take it as this. I can take information, but I had to do it. Sometimes it's not right. You know, it can even call a stubborn people and all that. But that makes me to think that what I can create something new, how can I make the difference in the market? You know, same thing as an SD, the thermostat, you know, something, it was there for always. And, but we were able to, they're able to go and change the world by that simple thing itself. Same yeah. way we did Wi Fi mesh in Qualcomm. And everybody was comfortable with uh, whatever they had in Wi Fi. And every customer pushed back on us saying that it's not going to be, no consumer is going to pay you know, this much yeah. of money. They will be cheaper. But we proved wrong. No, no, we're solving a key problem for consumer and he'll pay. And that to the world right now, everybody is buying a mesh only. So these are the yeah. things what we do and same way I continue to do it in here. Oxyata also, the security, we're rethinking how do you do it in hardware. And that's that's matters. Yeah, we're going to come to that. Uh, yeah. But I think uh, just coming back on your on your, your sort of bio, your profile, you, you put yourself as creator of the Wi-Fi you know, self-organizing network. And, um, and it is quite a big thing and you feel quite proud of that, don't you? Definitely. I mean, it's changing. There are some things, you know, my dad, again, I'm going to quote my dad again. Yeah. You got to do something, you can take it to the grave. So people will remember for those things. You know, this is one of them. So that's one of them to take it to the grave. So obviously I'm proud. So. And we're going to come to the sport thing in a little while. Let's talk first a little bit about your your latest venture. Or you, know, you joined Axiado in 2020 and pretty much, you know, turned it around in terms of raising funding, getting all the business sort of uh, sort of uh, targeting uh, the, the, the data center security. Tell us a little bit about that. So I was recruited by, so one of the investors was the old investors in my previous company, the one which was sold, uh, you know, uh, same guy he called us. You know, I was looking for, in Qualcomm, I was trying to spin out a company and you know, we did the mesh and we tried to do a public mesh. And there was a company we tried yeah. to do outside. And whatever the reason towards end and after all the funding came up and all, we couldn't do it. So some logistics stopped us. So kind of mind was ready to do another startup. And I started looking and somebody pinged me for this one. So I want to do something in cybersecurity. So I came in, the company was doing on a more of an IoT side cybersecurity. Yeah. So I came in and within in a month after, two months after, you know, I don't need to walk away from Qualcomm. I love those guys. and They love me too also. But I want to do something else. So I came in, pandemic hit, you know, was pretty bad. Uh, IoT market kind of shut down pretty much. Nobody mm, was yeah. in the calls. and. So I had to go to my Rolodex, which is a data center, networking, whatever I'm all like doing. So it gave me an opportunity to actually talk to all of these guys. Uh, you know, pandemic is, did shut down everybody, but I also give enough time. Like these video calls, video chats came up. So I got a big CEOs and CTOs, technologists table to get on a call. It's supposed to be 30 minutes, but it goes to two hours. Kind of it's cool. a social can, you know, discussion. What is the problem there? How we can solve, how we can address. So I got a lot of input from all of these guys for like three months. Based on that input, we found a hole and that gap that we can fill in. And that's what this new product came out to be in tailored for this hardware AI anchor hardware security for everybody to do it. And you know, a lot of customers give a feedback. The success for us right now is because we got direct feedback from the problem sequence. We solved it. How do you enable the world and all that? This is security. That's that's what we are in place right now. But that's that's what made it this oxyar to be the company. We were 15 people when I came in. Today, we're close to 150 people. Right. So it's a, 
you know, most of these guys are my ex-startup companies and the Qualcomm Marvel guys and came up and joined and they enjoyed the ride before and they're, they're going to be here with me again. So whatever the success I had without those guys, it's not there. So and I'm fortunate. You, you, you highlighted two things, really. One is... You, uh, the way you, when you, you came in and you had the call with this, you know, your contacts in the data center market, you know, that epitomizes the Silicon Valley sort of connectedness and, yeah. and sort of a capability to sort of just deploy something or do something. And the other one is, yeah, teams working together and repeatedly making successes. Yeah, it's a, it's a drug. So you get to, once you get the success... Uh, I think Jensen was saying uh, from NVIDIA founder was saying a couple of days ago in interview that no founder will tell you that uh, he would start a company if he had a mind. Uh, you know, yeah. it's true. Uh, you know, it's painful every time, even though this is my fourth, it's painful. Everything is different. But trust me, once you, you know, once you get the success of product and cheating that product happen, you forget all the pain and don't go to redo it again. So it's just, it's just a drug that it continues to do it. And that's the beauty of the Bay Area. You know, that's all. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that fascinates me a lot. I mean, uh, I think uh, I've spent so much time there, but not actually lived there. And uh, yeah, every time I come there, I'm just energized. Uh, yeah. And I was energized by our meeting as well. Um, so Axiado, you, you say, yeah, data center security, but people will just say, oh yeah, data center security. Give us the scenario that you're trying to prevent. And, and, and I'm leading into one of my favorite movies, Die Hard and Die Hard 4. Yeah, so let me just quickly talk about that. So cybersecurity is a big word. There's thousands of thousands yeah. of companies are working on this too also. Uh, and so, so we have to feed your clearly it focus into exactly what we're solving, make it easy, yeah. come out of this uh, noise around. So we target ransomware, okay? And just to make it inside the ransomware also, I'll give you in maybe next two minutes, I'll explain that. Yeah. Let me explain what's a simple ransomware. I think I told you in in person, but maybe for the recording purpose. In a simple way, ransomware is nothing but a bad actor came into your platform. However, he came in through the kernel, through the operating system, through the application, to the software, however he came into, he came in and took over the system, one, or you encrypt the hard disk and then ask for ransomware. In both cases, if you care about your content on the hard disk or care about the platform, what you have it, you have to pay a ransomware to him. You know, ransom to get the system access back to you. Yeah. Unfortunately, there is no forensic data what is lost in there and all that. So there is a loophole gap in there. And every software solution in the market, majority of them are software solutions. By any company you see upon Palo Alto to Zscaler, Snowflake, CloudStrike, and any of these companies, all these enterprise security, they do stop a port of entry. They focus in a bad actor coming in, you stop those. So every solution is that way. But unfortunately, they're figuring out a bad actor is also becoming smarter. AI is helping them to do it also. Yeah. So they come in inside. Once they come in, you have to come to that platform or the hardware where the hardware platform is there. Hard disk is there. We are as a last line of defense, just like we talked about. So we'll be on the hardware to protecting these things. Okay. You can ask the question whether all these X86 and everybody, why are they not protecting themselves? This is where my Bruce Woodis example comes up. So we are the co-processor on the board. Our duty is nothing but doing exactly monitoring everything. So even though you have, let's take an example of, if you have fire, you know, fire station has uh, all kind of tools inside, but if fire station is on fire, the tools are useless for you. This is exactly the scenario where the if host CPU, in this case, x86 or ARM, doesn't matter. If that is already been compromised, there's nothing you can do with all the secure and things you write in there. You need an outside guy like us to be third party watching over. So in that example, how do we watch over is exactly what I give you last time. So we're like in you know, a diehard movies, you know, Bruce Woody's in that role, you know, John McCain character. Yeah. He's always in the building, right? He's always in that thing. But threat actor or bad actor or villain in that case does not know he exists. Okay. In this case yeah. also, we're always on the platform, but the bad actor came in through most of the time, so like 86 only our whole CPU. So he doesn't know we exist. So we are monitoring from outside, just like that movie. You'll know the, how many attackers are there, how many hostages are there, you know, which building or where it is, et cetera. Similar to that, we can tell how he came in, what he's trying to behave, what he's trying to do, all that attracts exactly, collect all that forensic data and seek help from outside if I can't stop. And with us help from outside, just like in that movie, 
and he'll go and you know basically kill all of those guys and see where we can eradicate all the bad actors in there. That's exactly the scenario we can use it. That's one, obviously, to do it. And the second analogy I can give you is simple. All the solutions today, assume there's a band is being attacked or robbed or things like that. You have a cameras to watch over in the back. The cameras triggers only after the bad actor, or in this yeah. case, if breaks the wall, breaks sure. the door, then only your alarm goes on and all that stuff. So you have enough time to, you need to be, have enough time to respond. How fast respond based on that you can catch the key and how much data is not lost in that case. So that's a present solutions. What we do is different. Think about in the same scenario, we continue to monitor around your building itself that any anomaly behavior happens, we can detect the thief or bad actor outside before even he approaches your building. Okay, that way we stop it in the tracks before it, the guy breaks it itself. So you can monitor and give it to XRD6 saying, hey, there's something is wrong happening. This particular user is behaving differently and we can monitor that that could be potential because we know the patterns of how the bad actor will behave yeah. in this case in the ransomware. How the ransomware comes up and attack and how the encryption happens, we know. We train our AI models inside. We match to that saying that, hey, this is a potential bad guy. Potential bad behavior is happening. We could stop there. So that is that is the kind of change in a simple way to do it. And we're not replacing any of these port of entry thing. We're actually augmenting these guys. Most of these guys use a, something called a zero trust model, which they yeah. use root of trust. So immutable root of trust. So we make it as that root of trust, a true immutable root of trust, not just a check mark one. That's the difference. Okay. And um, so if you, you're not actually just monitoring, you're also enabling you know, the uh, you know, halting of those or you know, killing those, as yes. you say. So we can, we can, uh, we are empowerment in this particular model because we are the first one to boot up on the system. So we have power to stop, whether it is a user, okay. whether it is a on the, you know, whether it is just on a virtual, you know, VMware or VM machines itself, itself, or even it's in a container itself or an application, we know exactly we can stop that, number one. Or, you know, some people don't want it to, you know, stop everything. They want to collect the forensic data. Then he can, the box maker or a CSP, cloud service provider can put the rules how you want to react it. We will sure detect and afterwards it's up to the you know, box maker to decide whether he wants to use the power of us to stop or not. The least thing we can do is if any anomaly detection or we match to any ransomware attack coming up, we'll be able to quarantine ourselves or quarantine that particular user, quarantine that particular container, and then let everybody else in the rack to know that this is something we monitor. So be careful yep. about that. And then let yeah. the IT guy come back and clear me out. So, okay. And what's the uh, like, what's been the response? Uh, so one of the things I remember when I start, started writing for EA Times uh, maybe five six years ago is uh, everybody was telling me when I started writing about cybersecurity, everybody was telling me from the vendor point of view, their customers are not really sort of thinking of security in the first instance, and it's just a last minute add on. What are the trends you're seeing right now? Is there a lot more awareness, a lot of willingness to to pay to do all of this? In the world of, to answer your question on saying that, you know, how is the world adopting this thing to be? So in the beginning, you know, if you look at anybody, everybody tells you cybersecurity is important for me and all that stuff. But unfortunately, spending time comes up, they look for a you know, simple path and cheaper path, which is mostly software at this point. But there was an interview from uh, Palo Alto CEO, Mr. Aurora. You can look at that too also. That trend is changing. The people start spending money now that they see a value, how much of loss happens in here. And unfortunately, not everybody yet there, but the most of the enterprises, bigger guys, financial institutions realize that loss is much bigger than the, you know, trying to not to you know, pay money to this so-called insurance at this point, for protection insurance. And that transitioning to what I'm changing the world or Axia or changing the world is not just the software. Now you're going to change the hardware too also. That's a little bit of uphill battle. Right now, yeah. still, you know, a lot of NIH factor, not invented here. Everybody has some way to solution. So it works. I'm good with it. You know, we're a small startup to be able to convince that. So that's the uphill battle I got to do. Uh, but it's a strategic level relationship we're able to build and show something value and starts coming up. And I hope, like, just like uh, Palo Alto CEO said, and most probably these guys will turn around and see the value to be able to. It all takes to one Zoom moment, like the Zoom type, how the, you know, Zoom is like stock went up and all that because 
it shows the value needed. Yeah. We're, we're going to be showing something in the world of coming up and we are the only one can stop. And that will come. Not that I'm say, wishing anything bad, but you know, we would be in a, that situation where we have compute power to do it. And that turn, it will turn completely more, more popular comes up. But at this point, more strategic right now. It's not, it, it, we're not cheaper. It's not anything, you know, startup company cannot sell the cheaper solution to the market. So it won't be that mm. way. But it's a value sell, and we need to see and convince the market with value sell. It's coming there. Everybody's now uh, coming there. There was a conference two weeks ago at OCP, Open Compute Platform. We came out, we showed a six, seven boxes of customers, and everybody got excited, you know, see the value right now. So it's more of turning that to enablement right now. But it's still not there. Still not there. You're, you're right of saying everybody builds the, everything, the bells and whistles first, then thinks about the security afterwards. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, it, it'll take time, but it'll take that uh, that moment, like, as you said, like that you know that Zoom moment or or some something that triggers it, triggers it. Well, yeah. I mean, there is actually a lot of uh, worry about AI, uh, and, and you know there are summits around the world. Uh, there was one in London, uh, just you know talking about you know how do we protect from you know bad AI, and I guess you know this is this part of that solution. It's definitely, so we can, there's a pattern of how the behavior you got to teach. So uh, I think there was somebody else also was telling that uh, it's a, AI is something like a kid. So it cannot hide anything. You ask, it'll answer based on whatever it knows. It doesn't have a reservation in one way or other. Okay, so it helps for the bad actor, it helps for the good, right? So both ways. You have to see how you train back to be. So based on the contextual awareness and you know the way things are happening, and behavior and model detection, we will be able to, and using AI too. We use Gen AI models completely work on that too. Also, using AI to counter the AI itself, but we do it as a, you know, as a Bruce Willis, which is outside. Yeah. Simple. Okay. Um, so part of this um, uh, sort of these interviews is to talk a little bit about you as well. And uh, I think I read in a, an interview with a GSA that you did uh, uh, that you are a thrill-seeking CEO. And you talked about the sport analogy earlier. Uh, I think it, you, know, you, you like to play and coach uh, you know, basketball, cricket. You do paragliding, bungee jumping, diving. Tell, tell us a little bit about the, this. This, this uh, are you still doing it? <laughs> yeah. So uh, one of those characters are a little bit con- considered as restless people. So yeah. I can't sit idle and watch only things. I got to do something continuously. Again, that may be my genes that some other people are like that. That includes the thrill seeking too. Also, maybe the startups also thrill seeking in here. Uh, yes, yeah. we I do all the stuff, and we do our dirt bikes, and I do ride up you know, Harley right now. Used to be sports bikes, and now it's Harley as I get older. But yeah, this is this is fun. That gives you different. You know, you jump off the plane, it gives you different adrenaline. Uh, you know, it's not the fear, but it's an adrenaline. I enjoy that. So uh, that that you know, it's been there for long. So we'll continue to do that. Yes. Do you have to go somewhere special for that, or is it is it in no, the Bay Area it's, itself? It's, anywhere is available, I will do it. That's pretty much anywhere available. I'll do it, and if not, that's as I said, bike, dirt bikes, and stuff like that. Every roller coaster in the world, and here we kind of rode that too out. So whatever it is, it's fun that that. Now I don't have much time to do them that long and all that, but it's it's still fun. We'll do that. So. Yeah, I mean, you're obviously focused on building uh, companies and your sport, but. Do you, what's your the, the most sort of favorite bit of technology that you either use or or is like like seeing people use? I think this uh, right now is a Gen AI. It's going to be this like uh, you know somebody invented uh, smartphones, and if smartphone mm. came up, if you remember that there was just supposed to be a phone, and you you know all the Nokia has a feature phones before smartphone came up, suddenly the App Store. Think like that's the Gen AI's app store right now. It's amazing uh, how many things you can do, and it's a crowdsource. If you had to look at the Gen AI, it's nothing but everybody's feeding and how to compute and all yeah. that stuff. And it's a crowdsource together, so I don't need to learn. In our generation, you know, I'm sure you're the same generation too. If somebody tells yeah. you 25 plus 35, you, you can tell like that. In next generation, never try the 25 plus 35 other than the calculator. Okay. Yeah. That's because not that they're not intelligent, but they're not trained to do the mundane job. That become a mundane job. And the same way now it becomes you know, big computing, LLM models and all that. You know, human doesn't need to do it. Machines can do it. So it, the growth of technology evolution happened. This is magical completely. The Gen AI is completely magical. We are, we are building a data link for ourselves was also before 
before this Gen AI start chat GPT thing came up or OpenAI right. came up. And then we experimented with OpenAI. That's it. And we see, okay, that can give a faster results for me to do it. So it does take away some of the jobs, what it has, but definitely creates something to be a lot more a powerful tool. I think that's the thing. I'm more intrigued by that one right now. Uh, okay. you know, we started our AI to be what we're doing and all that. Our AI is inferencing is not a computer vision based based on everybody else to use this. So if it's a 4K, one image for me is the one millionth of the size of my packet information. So I don't need a big memory, but I still use the same training, inferencing, et cetera, all that stuff needed to do. But all that using this general, you know, gen AI type of open AI stuff working, amazing. That that's that's intriguing. I'm sure if I go backwards, networking was amazing. You know, making uh, you know, you remember the DSL modems making that, you know, sign, you know, 14.2 modem work, working, making a lot of noise, takes 20 minutes to come online. And here yep. we'll pass to level right now, you know, people complain, you know, one gigabit also not good enough, right? So it's a, okay. it's a complete change. Because of that itself, the world connected together, social media, yeah. came up. I think we're still shot off the every computing. That's the industry right now. Uh, we built the networks to be 10 years ahead. But the, now the growth of social media and all the content sharing came up so much that that need to be rebuilt. That's the whole market of infrastructure, compute infrastructure network need to be built again. I think that those are my strengths and I'm happy to do it again. Yeah, well, that's that's really good. So now what, what I always ask uh, my guests is, okay, what would you tell young Gopi uh, after what you know now? Yeah, what's the advice you would give to young Gopi? Well, not even young Gopi, but yeah. Others who want to do what you're doing, uh, sort of creating an impact. What would be their advice? I'll start with the first mine. I think that could be common for a second. Yeah, lot, most of my, let's say, school, schooling and all the stuff is very tense, focus. You know, you can you know, call it a, a geek type of kid type, you know, focus only doing it. You can chill out a little bit. You know, it's a life is long that you can do a lot more. And I do it afterwards. I did enjoy it and I do everything. I spend time in multiple things I can do, parallel and all that stuff. I enjoy it. You talk about whether it's jumping out the plane or going on a bike ride and all that. It's mixing this work and I do. I think that's the balance in life. You can still achieve a lot more bigger things by having a balance in life. Family comes first. Uh, you know, you spend time with your family need to be done. I tell my all employees also, that's the first thing. You know, family comes first. If you have to drop off a kid, go ahead and do it. Don't put it on your, you know, better off than every time. It's going to buy yeah. up and your mind start fighting. You, will, you won't be able to do everything for me. So take care of that and come back and do it. So the new kids, a lot of people lack of passion right now. I don't know. We are all, and I'm sure you grow up, something inspired you, right? Yeah. And that makes you to go on. Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan inspired me in exactly. 1970s. Exactly. Something inspired. doesn't matter whether it's a sports, technology, or the work. Yeah. You look up to something, make some inspiration. You know, it's tough for this generation to come out of the social media. That so much of usage, the brain is not easy. That watching, but get something inspired and focus on that. Whatever you like, do what you like, and you'll enjoy that. Trust me. It might look tougher. Don't go, go with the flow. Whatever you like, and go with what you can do, and don't chase money. Money will come to you. You know, you just go for your success and dream what you can do. It. Well, that sounds like extremely good advice. Uh, it sort of goes across eras. So, uh, yeah, well, Gopi, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. The good chat. You made me to go a little bit off, reminiscent of all my things and you made me some think about. I think uh, when I see all these things will come back, I guess. All the people will help me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.